I call the honourable member Paul Quinn. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Question. Speaker. And can I, like others, join as one in uh, congratulating uh, and uh, farewelling uh, the honourable John Carter um, to the next career step? Um, others have spoken, so I just want to add my support to those comments. Mr Speaker, we have just heard one of the most extraordinary speeches from the Speaker that has just sat down. Extraordinary. About the only part that I could agree with him, the only part that I could agree with him was the last bit when he quoted, um, not verbatim, but referred to comments made by the uh, immediate past Secretary of the Treasury, one John Whitehead, about what was required to improve productivity. And I agree with those comments. And the f sad reality of, uh, of, of the fact is that there has been a productivity negative for the whole of the previous administration. And I've got the figures here, John, um, David. I've got the figures right order, here. Order, order, order. Member will refer to the member by his full name or his title. David Clinton, I have the figures here, straight from the Department of Stats. Um, so the fact is that what this government is doing is necessary to, in fact, achieve the exact things that the previous speaker set out uh, in his speech. And that's exactly what we're doing. And while the opposition, Mr Speaker, likes to prattle on about where's the plan, I say to them that if they want to, this country to wallow in the misery of people like Stalin and Khrushchev and Brezhnev and their ilk, then they can well wallow in that misery. But let me tell them, this government and the people of this country acknowledge that we are getting on with the job of building a future based on a strong economy. And this budget follows and builds, in fact, on the previous two budgets, particularly the last budget, which in fact created an environment for the change process of savings and investment and established a coherent, sustainable and equitable tax system. You see, Mr Speaker, the government's job is to set the strategy, to create the right environment in order that our entrepreneurs and business people can actually get on with the task of creating jobs and increasing exports. And that's exactly what is happening. Exports, for the first time, our tradables have, uh, through our uh, good administration and guidance of this country, and allowing the export people to get on with their jobs, in fact, we've, uh, the tradable sector has, for the first time uh, in about 10 years, returned to the black. And I'll come back to that a bit more. The government's job, Mr Speaker, is to allow people to pursue their dreams and their aspirations. It's not for the government to run their lives. It's to ensure equality of opportunity, not, as the previous administration did, coordinate mediocrity. The government's job is to empower, not prescribe. So let's remind ourselves, Mr Speaker, that equality of opportunity does not guarantee equality of outcome. And as Materia Ture might have us believe that egalitarianism is not about mediocrity, it's actually about equality of opportunity, Mr Speaker. And the government's job is to provide the tools and create the aspirational pathways for people. 
So what is, let's talk about the government strategy, seeing that the opposition still doesn't get it. Let's just talk about some of the things. Firstly, firstly, Mr Speaker, the government is focused on better public services, not a bloated public service. And we have already heard from previous speakers on this side about what measures are being taken, increased expenditure targeted to improve the outcomes from primary school, from early childhood education and from secondary schools, because that is the future. They are the future of this country and this is, that is where this government is focusing its attention, Mr uh, Speaker. And in fact, we've had comments during the taxation bill and uh, again in the uh, budget about the fact that um, part of the budget uh, requested that the uh, chief executives of government departments find a billion dollars and that this was an extraordinary event and if you know, this had happened in a cabinet that uh, Mr Mallard uh, was in then, then uh, there would be trouble. Well, all that proves is that, that confirms is that Mr Mallard is the bully that he is. But the fact of the matter is $650,000 of that million dollars is already targeted through, in fact, uh, putting the Kiwi saving deduction straight back to the departments. And in fact, these people are paid significant salaries to actually run their departments. Not the government, not the ministers, but, uh, but, the, but the CEOs to run their departments. Now, I know that uh, Dr Bashara in his day probably... Uh, uh, <laughs> sorry. Eh? Prasad. Prasad. Dr Prasad. Dr Prasad. Sorry, uh, my friend. Dr Prasad probably um, struggled under the burden of responsibility in the Commission, but so he probably doesn't understand what I'm saying here. But anyway, this, another factor in the strategy that this government is doing is to bring the public debt under control, reducing public borrowing from 300 million per week today to next year going into uh, the ne next financial year to $100 million a week. And this was so that by 2014 we will be in surplus. And these, these issues have to be dealt with. And in fact, so and if, if Mr. Prasad does not, Dr. Prasad doesn't understand it, then I can't, you know, I'm happy to take you aside and give you an economics lesson. Uh, but, but other than that, I, I really can't do uh, much. But the fact of the matter is that these, the, the, the issue of public debt and getting borrowing under control has all to do with maintaining interest rates at a low level and, of course, underscores the investment drive. Ongoing development of infrastructure is another. I just want to talk about business and innovation and trade, of course, and <clears throat> the tax credit scheme. I mean, it's fascinating. We have the retiring Deputy Commissioner of the IRD, Robin Oliver, who in fact was scathing, in an article written a week or so ago, was scathing of the concept of tax credits. And my colleagues, Mr Speaker, have already canvassed the various issues uh, that are there. But I was fascinated that in terms of this research and innovation, the Labor Party, uh, it was reported, had uh, Sir Paul Callaghan address their... their, uh, their uh, what was it, a symposium or what was it? A Congress. Oh, Congress, yes. Um, but it seemed to me they missed, they actually missed the most important three words that Sir Paul Callaghan said. And what he said is we require entrepreneurial genius. That's exactly what he said. And that's the most important part. That's actually the most important because, because the entrepreneurial genius it's the entrepreneurial genius that will actually create the opportunities that Labour... Well, I mean, let's talk about the hobbits. Let's talk about the hobbits. Here's some people, here's some people wanting to get on with getting, getting entrepreneurs, letting entrepreneurs do their thing with some innovation. What do they want to do? Kill them. They want to kill them. 
Now, and, and in fact, the, 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 fundamental issue, the fundamental issue is that we must continue what the Time magazine calls encourage the minds, builders and titans. Mr Chair and Mr Speaker, can I finish by saying this? Sorry to interrupt the, the member. The national Investor Build, order. Labor, Pillage order. and Butcher. Order. He was talking about hobbits in a derogatory way. <laughs> <laughs> I call uh, <laughs> I call 